Take it away, Jim. Steve, what happened there at they the end of the half? They call some bullshit, man. That's all I'm saying. Well, there the it is. This game, however, how did you manage this? Play hard. If the refs gonna keep acting like that, we ain't gonna keep playing like that. I wanna go far. There's no stopping. I see them watching. I see them waiting. One day I swear I'ma be on the station. Mama, I gotta make moves. Before we start this video, I have to shout out my sponsor, SeatGeek. The NBA season is finally here, and if you want to see your favorite NBA players live, you better use this app. SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web into one spot, making your job easy as can be. They rate those deals on a scale of 1 to 100 to let you know whether you're getting a good deal or a bad deal. And my personal favorite part about this app, they actually give you a visual of what your seats will look like. And using my promo code SWISHOUT knocks off $20 off your first purchase. So I'll drop the link in the description box and you guys better use this app if you go to any games. I know I am. Steve Francis or Steve Franchise. Some of you may know him from his negative publicity from the last few years. And when I say negative publicity, I mean negative publicity. He's been arrested for burglary. There's a video on him cursing out the police while being arrested. And his new look isn't that appealing. I mean, he really looks like he's on some type of drugs. And my eyes aren't deceiving me. In fact, last December, his ex-wife actually accused him of abusing drugs and alcohol. So. His look isn't that appealing. He looks like he's closer to 60 and he's only 40 years old. So with all that being said, I don't want to make it seem like I'm flaming him or anything like that. What happened to a former NBA All-Star who was once nicknamed Steve Franchise for his dynamic abilities on the court? Like, what happened to his NBA career? Well, to start, Steve Franchise was a college basketball phenom at the University of Maryland. His electrifying dunks and crossovers led the University of Maryland to a number two rank and a trip to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. And he was so dominant in college, it actually led to the Vancouver Grizzlies selecting a 6'3 point guard with their number two overall pick in the 1999 draft. But Steve Francis was one of those players that didn't want to play for a specific team for whatever reason, so Vancouver had to trade him and he ended up on the Houston Rockets. Now, if you didn't get to see Steve Francis play for whatever reason or you don't know much about him, Steve Francis was almost like a taller, more athletic version of Allen Iverson. Like, his crossover was lethal and he could finish at the rim with the best of them. I mean, in Steve Francis' rookie year, it seemed like he had it all. He shared Rookie of the Year honors with Elton Brand. He was the runner-up in the slam dunk contest to the one and only Vince Carter, and he averaged 18 points in his rookie season. I mean, it was pretty great. And for his next three seasons, he made three consecutive All-Star games, and it looked like he really had a promising NBA career. Then the Houston Rockets coach at the time, Jeff Van Gundy, and Steve Francis' relationship began to fade, so he was traded to Orlando for Tracy McGrady, where he can at least have a fresh start. And in his first season with Orlando, his career seemed to be revived just a bit. He got his averages back up to 20 points per game, and some people say this was his last season actually being healthy. But from there on, he began struggling with coaching once again. In fact, there was actually an incident where he wouldn't even go into the game for Coach Brian Hill. And you're a player and you won't even go into the game. And your coach is telling you to. This dude obviously had a huge ego by this time. So Orlando had to do something. So they find him from that. And they had to move on from Steve Francis because if a guy can't even go into the game for his coach, you have to move on. So ultimately, they traded him to the Big Apple where he seemed like he was more motivated than ever to play. I mean, Steve Francis even told the New York Times that one of his goals was to have his jersey hanging from the New York Raptors so this dude thought he was going to be a legend for the Knicks but by the end of his first full season with the Knicks he was traded to Portland where the Trailblazers bought him out of his contract for 30 million so his whole thing with the Knicks it just didn't work out and at the time if you just sat there and thought about it it was just like a wow factor like wow an NBA all-star three seasons ago couldn't even find a home in the NBA anymore an NBA team would rather blow 30 million just to get rid of him so he was just clearly not a valuable player on his team anymore so in 2008 no teams wanted him anymore and his NBA career was over just like that he only played about nine seasons in the NBA and he had his quick moments of stardom but just like that no teams wanted him and no teams were interested so his career was over and just an interesting comparison to how quick his career actually was since 2010 since LeBron joined the Miami Heat 
He played a total of 659 games, including the playoffs, and that's about seven seasons. Steve Francis' whole career, nine-year career, including the playoffs, was only 581 games. LeBron, 659 games in seven seasons. Steve Francis, 581 in nine seasons, including the playoffs. That's that's pretty crazy to me. And that's kind of just crediting LeBron James for being insanely durable. But I just wanted to show you how quick this career actually was. Imagine LeBron James' career only in about six seasons with all the games he played. That was basically Steve Francis' career. So, you know, that's that. And after his NBA career was evidently over, Steve Francis even tried to join the Chinese Basketball League, but he only averaged about 0.5 points per game. So, you know, it didn't work out there either. And just my personal analysis and my personal opinion on Steve Francis's career and life and whatever, he seems like one of those athletes that one, his career ended way sooner than he expected. And after his career was over, he really didn't know what to dive into. So he kind of just got himself into some trouble. And after that, it just left, it just, you know, kind of got his life into the wrong place. You know, it's like now, since he took his last dribble in the NBA or the Chinese Basketball Association, it's like his life is just taking a toll to the worst. Now I see this man getting his chain snatched by random dudes. I see this man getting choked out by Steven Jackson, a former NBA player. I never got that. Uh, I see this man getting arrested on TMZ like once a year. So now I'll just pray for him and, you know, I hope you guys do the same. And hopefully he's in a better place right now. But, you know, guys, that's the video. I want to thank you guys really quickly for 70,000 subscribers. That means so much. I, I never got a chance to thank you guys like I wanted to. So 70,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so, so much. We are 30,000 away from 100K. We will hit that by the end of this year because I got a new schedule. Every Wednesday and Saturday, I will be posting videos. So let me know in the comments who you want to see next, please. If you like this video, like this video. Uh, make sure you guys use SeatGeek. The NBA season is back. I'm excited. Thank you guys for looking at this video. And until next time, guys, stay tuned, stay tuned Jay. Jay. I'm trapped in my conscious, my trap is still bunking, we got all these hundreds, hit up the whole pharmacist, we serve all the money, my shit at your body, we shot at my body, this guy keep on falling, the drugs I keep calling, he keep picking up for me, and love me, I don't wanna buy